Hello students, uh, this is Brock Skaggs, and I'm going to make this video to show how to use configurations inside of the SOLIDWORKS part file. And so configurations are very useful if you want to create a family of parts where they're going to have related features. And so a simple example here is the uh, leaf of a hinge you may have on the door to your office, door to your bedroom, and so forth there. And so if you've seen these, they come in a lot of different varieties. Some have the two knuckles. Uh, the mating one has the three knuckles on it. Um, some of them have chamfered edges on these holes here for countersunk screws. Um, the end conditions as well could be a nice large round like this, something like a half inch radius there, um, or it could be a little smaller, a quarter, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, five eighths, uh, different materials, different finishes on it, uh, so on and so forth there. But they all generally contain uh, the same quantity of features here and the same overall shape there. And so it's something you could uh, build an entire family of them inside of a single SOLIDWORKS part file. And then you just toggle through the individual configuration until you find one uh, that is of interest to you. And so here we're starting off with our blank uh, model and we'll add a couple configurations to it. And so configurations are managed in the configuration tab right here. You can see configuration manager. And so just clicking on it, you see that this part currently has just a single configuration called default. And so every part file that you've ever created um, has had a default configuration that you've done most of your work on if you didn't know anything about configurations to begin with there. And so we're going to go ahead and create another configuration. And we'll do it using manual configuration. So I'm just going to go to the very top of my little node tree here. And I'll go to add configuration. And so here let's make one that has a 0.25 radius. And let's make it out of brass for the material. And so I'll just go ahead and accept that. And you can see I've created another line item here, another node in this tree. And now I've got a second configuration. And so if you toggle between these two by just double clicking, you can see that there's nothing different between them. They're exactly the same at this point. And so now we're going to start changing the 0.25 radius. And so one thing I'm going to be sure that I do is have the 0.25 radius brass configuration active. And then I'm going to go back to the, the usual tab here for the feature tree. And one thing you'll notice is our file name here is hingeleaf underscore no config. Uh, but then if I pull off to the right, you can see it actually tells me the configuration and something called the display state as well. And so if I go back, I can change it to default. And you can see it registers, hey, I'm using the default configuration at this point. And so you can always tell what configuration is currently active if you look at this part right here of the feature tree. And so we want to make this out of the material of brass. And so all I have to do is right click on material. And instead of going to edit material like I usually would, I go down to configure material. And so I've got configure material open here. Notice I have a nice dialog box that has different line items associated with each configuration. And here I just come to the 0.25 radius brass configuration and I select brass as my material and click OK. And so now that I've applied brass to that specific configuration, we also wanted the radius to be a little smaller at 0.25. And so the way I like to do that is to find the feature that contains the sketch of the dimension. So here I'll just double click on boss extrude one. And if I go normal to the screen here, you can see down here in the bottom has the radius of 0.5. And so that is the dimension that I'll need to change in order to control the radius of these rounds. And so what I like to do is notice I'm not inside of the sketch, but I'm still just previewing the dimensions that are controlling the sketch, which is using this boss extrude feature. And once I see these, I can right click on them and go to configure dimension. And so I've got configure dimension open here. Notice a very similar dialog box happens here. I've got the different configurations listed here and the dimension values here. Uh, this is the fourth dimension, D4, in sketch one. And so I'm just going to change it to 0.25, hit enter and OK and we should see it update there and yes if you look very closely you caught that that the radius is a little bit smaller now and so that should be everything for this configuration uh, we've changed material as well we've changed, as we've changed the dimension there and so we can go ahead and test it uh, by coming back to the configuration tab here and if I double click on default notice I get back to my previous geometry and I go to 0.25 radius brass and I achieve that geometry as well and so I have two related parts but I can just toggle now between their differences 
And so I'm going to go ahead and have the default selected again. I'm going to go right back and I'm going to create a third configuration here. So I'll right click on the top node, go to add configuration. And now I'm going to make one that's 0.65 radius. And let's call it copper here. And so it'll be the exact same steps here. Uh, notice here that it went back to the original default one because I had it selected when I went to add the new configuration there. And so this 0.65 one right now is just like the default. And so I'll just go ahead and quickly go back through this. Again, it was not edit material, but it was configure material. And so you still see now we have three light items here. Um, copper is right here, so I'll go ahead and hit OK there. Double clicking on the feature shows the dimensions for that sketch. And then I can right click on any given dimension and go to configure dimension in order to change the value here. So, just like so, I've now created a third variation. Here's my first, there's my first default one. Here's the first one we created, and now the second one created. And so you can see it's much more convenient than doing something like file, save, add each time, and then at this point I'd have to manage three different files. And so let's do one more, and let's one, make one with sharp corners. Let's have it gray cast iron, and let's also suppress a feature as well. And so to do that, we'll just create a new configuration. Again, my reference is going to be default. And so I'll right click on the top node, go to add configuration, call it sharp corners, gray cast iron. And here I'm also going to remove the chamfers. And so I've got it sharp corners, gray cast iron. It's my active configuration, as you can see. And so for the sharp corners bit, I'll just double click the feature so I can see the sketches. I'll right click on my radius dimension there, put configure dimensions, and here I'm just going to put a very small value, so five thousandths of an inch should do us. And so clicking OK submits that, and you can see if you just look at it from the front view, it looks almost like a right angle there, and right in a sharp corner. You'd have to zoom in pretty far to see you do have a, a small radius in there. And so what else do we have? We said that this needs to be gray cast iron. So again, that's right-clicking material, configure material, and going to gray cast iron. Um, notice gray cast iron is not one of the ones listed here. And so you just go to browse more at the very bottom. And you have the usual material selection dialog box here. And so I've got gray cast iron right here. And the last thing we said we wanted to do is take away the chamfers. And so this would be an entire feature suppression. And so to do that, um, you can just right click on a feature in the tree and you'll have configure feature. And the first option you have is to suppress or unsuppress it. And so right now they're not checked. And so the feature is active in all of those configurations or unsuppressed. And so I'll just click on it to suppress it. I notice there's also a little arrow with a drop down box here next to chamfer one. And so what you can do now is select the actual dimensions that characterize that chamfer. And so here's one way to control the dimensions inside of a feature is to click the little drop down arrow here. And this chamfer is characterized by a length as well as a angle here. And so just since we're here, let's see if we can go ahead and adjust this as well. I'll change it to 0.125 inches in the quarter inch radius. And so we'll see a little bit bigger chamfer in the 0.25 radius brass configuration. And we should not see any chamfers at all in our sharp corners gray cast iron. And so let's go ahead and test that. Uh, so just kidding, OK. Now we're in the sharp corners gray cast iron. And you can see right here that the chamfer has been removed, um, which is just as what we'd expected. It's still in the tree, but we've just suppressed it for this configuration. Now if I go to the 0.25 radius, Notice we're at a brass material here, and the chamfer is a little bit larger. Um, you can see that uh, very easily. If I go now from the 0.25 radius to 0.625 radius, you should see the chamfer get smaller, just like so. And so at this point now, we have four different variations of this hinge leaf part. Um, sharp corners, a little bit smaller radius, a little bit bigger radius, and our, our default one there. And we're changing materials along the way as well. And so I hope this helps you understand the configurations part inside of the, the SOLIDWORKS part files. Uh, similar things can also be done inside of assembly files as well. And so thank you for watching the video.